I don't mean to brag, but um, Benchmade sent me the new 417, or the Fact, which is a tactical everyday carry knife, to do a review on because they know a tactical bro when they see him. Now, they may have been impressed with the theory behind my Gray Man videos. Or my simple demonstration of the fighting grid for self-offense. Okay, remember if your opponent is... Here, 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 or here. Don't use a fat. Just cram it instead. Remember. Remember, there's no such thing as a defense grid because defense is for dead people. Or maybe it was my logically sound car rants about snowflakes. Oh, so it's a feathery crystal formation, typically consistent of delicate, Six-fold symmetry. It used to be a liquid and now it's a solid. Well, that sounds kind of unnatural, doesn't it? Also, donate to my GoFundMe. I need some, uh, shit my way. And while you ponder those reasons, let's check out the overall dimensions, like the length and the weight. Not too bad, right? Look at that weight. The blade length and the cutting edge. Man, that's pointy. The handle size, the grip area, which is nice for its compact size. Spine thickness and handle thickness. And tallness when the blade happens to be closed and not opened. I think that rolls off the tongue better than tallness closed, right? Or even height. The Benchmade 417, or the Benchmade Fact, is a compact tactical knife that is long and pointy and uses a blade known as a spear point made from S30V steel with a satin finish that looks slightly stonewashed if the light hits it just right or you're just really high. The perfectly centered blade pivots on opulent phosphor bronze washers. And since my blade says prototype, I am ordered to immediately destroy it after the review. It also must be noted if you're going to carry a long thin pointy blade, you know it's not for prying, right? You need to mind the tip. If you're prone to treating your own blades worse than the jerk you may loan a knife to, or you drop things a lot, maybe thin pointy blades aren't for you. The blade is deployed by thumb studs and locked into place with an axis lock, because it's a bench made. The thumb studs sit close to the handle when closed, however you can get your thumb in there for easy, consistent deployments. Maybe not if you have large gloves on. Flick, flick, flick. I look like a real pro, huh? Sorry, I'm fishing for compliments. I did need to adjust my pivot slightly to get it to my desired fidgetability, though. And like all my bench maids with an axis lock, you can get it to open just by flinging it downward at the right angle. That's just an axis lock for you. I still haven't had a bench made open in my pocket, though. The handle. For such a compact and light knife, much like the blade, the handle is larger than expected as far as the length goes. It's not that tall. There is plenty of room for my hand. Now, maybe not the hand of a loved one, too, but for even larger, more tactical hands, it works, too. The murdered out handle is constructed out of two parts, a matte black special ops stainless steel liner and a skunk works black anodized aluminum, well, scales that are scalloped and textured. At first feel, the handle feels like a grippy G10 and not aluminum, but it is, and the surface isn't that smooth. If you're thinking smooth like a lion steel candy coated aluminum handle, well, it ain't. The knife is designed to be grippy and not fly out of your hand when it's wet. Because remember, you're on a tactical mission. There's some widely spaced jimping on the blade spine, so that's, that's cool. I don't have a really big bank of adjectives, so sorry. The handle is relatively comfortable despite having texture, and you can grip it nice and tight without discomfort. I noticed no sharp edges or hot spots, however, since there is a little bit of grippiness to it, you know, I don't know if it's an endurance cutting knife. I do like the pass-through skeletonization of the handle and the liners, because normal skeletonization can create pockets of goo or filth inside the handle that's not easy to clean out. The pass-through weight-saving holes make it easier to clean. The handle is an open back design with a few matte black standoffs. The blade edge doesn't get close to the back of the handle, and the tip isn't close enough to the rear of the handle to nick your palm when closing it. 
which is great because as frequently as you use your palm, those little cuts can hurt after a while. The clip is reversible to the right or left side in a tip-up configuration for faster deployment. The clip is deep carry and springy and matte black, so it checks all the tactical boxes with the tactical pen. Pocket clip is actually pretty good. I like it. I don't have any complaints about it. All right, comparison time. First, the fact. I'm not going to lie, and that's a fact. After the mini Cricket River, I thought Benchmade had knocked it out of the park with just that one. Then when I got the fact, I realized it's an equally great knife for Desk Warriors and Mall Ninjas alike. It's super compact, light, looks cool. There's that word again, you know, the reversible pocket clip. I'm basically just going over all the things I went through before to make the review longer. The blade is useful and pointy. It gets under tape and paper easily. It kind of looks like a tactical letter opener, which I think is an oxymoron, right? Now what about the Mini Crooked River? Not quite as stabby, but a little more robust of a tip if you ever pry or beat up on your blades a bit, like I do. Yeah, I think, I think I said all there is to say about that. So check out that review if you have a few minutes. How about the Griptilian? Similar handle sizes. However, I think the fact handle is a little more comfortable because it doesn't have that plastic handle jimping on the top or the bottom. The fact is about a $190 knife. The Griptilian is about 100 Plus, steel snobs tend to prefer S30V more over 154CM. But I really don't care what they think, because I don't have a strong preference on either. Also, which is more tactical, caring or not caring? Discuss. How about the Spyderco Paramilitary 2? This one has a nice thin blade stock, too, and a very uneven edge grind, but I still love it. Nice, comfortable handle. Um, okay, let's take a little more of a tactical route. If you're familiar with the Yojimbo 2, well, that's very thin and pointy too, but you know, it's known to be a thin tipped blade. Also mine has terrible blade centering. Some people think Benchmade has the worst QC out there. For me though, personally, my Spydercos have been worse. I still love the Spydercos, in fact the ones that have the off blade centering or the edge grind, but I don't really obsess about that stuff, but you've probably realized that by now. I see how they feel in my hand, how they operate, how they deploy, and go from there. One more long pointy blade, my Cold Steel Frenzy. This is one is long and stabby, and a thicker blade stop. The blade centering on this and the grind is actually pretty good and pretty even though. I think this one is probably more for the self-defense crowd. You know, those who prefer hypotheticals over utility. Personally, it's too big of a knife for me to carry in my pocket for that self-defense scenario. Let's do one more comparison so you kind of get the idea of the spine thickness and the blade profile. But we're gonna do a few other blades here. Side-by-side -side profiles first. The fact is in the center. Hopefully you can pick out what the other ones are, because I've reviewed them all. Notice the fact is actually thicker in the middle because it's a spear point, and that's just how it's ground. So just because it has a thin blade spine, the thicker center helps reinforce the blade closer to the tip. All right, let's look at a top-down view. Notice the fact in the center has about the thinnest spine. Again, it gets thicker in the middle, further down. It's a little hard to see. And if you look at the Endura 4 here, it actually has about as thin of a tip. However, it is a taller blade. You know, basically all of them are taller, with the exception of the 941, than the Fact. All right, so the Benchmade Fact. Let's restate some things I've already stated. Kind of like the 941, it's a bit unusual looking at first, but somehow it works for a utility blade pretty well. Piercing and stabbing are common everyday carrying tasks. And I guess tactical ones, too, if, you know, that's your profession. And the fact is, about as good as it gets for piercing and stabbing. It's well under four ounces. It's thin, pocketable. However, note, though, the matte scalloped handle is designed for traction, so expect it to wear on thin pocket material on the inside of your pockets. If you wear nice clothes, and you want the fabric around the inside of your pockets to stay fabulous and beautiful, maybe it's not the knife for you. On the other hand, I'm a person who doesn't mind pocket wear and character on my jeans and my pants, with the exception of my, you know, dress pants. The knife, even though it is compact, has a great hand feel, and there's plenty of room for your grip. Out of the eight or nine bench maids I own, it's probably in the top three now for everyday carry. I know it sounds like I'm really loving on the bench maids, but to be honest, the mini Crooked River and this are both kind of kind of nice knives. I think the Mini Crooked Raver is probably still my favorite, and I can't say if this or the 941, by this I mean the fact ranks higher, 
And I guess the bug out figures into a two, so maybe that's fourth. Anyway, check back in six months, or don't. If you like this review, subscribe to my channel, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment. Thanks to all of my old and new subscribers. Yay, 20,000 now. So thanks for watching.